better. Of course it's better. And what's better is just the attitude of the players, the energy levels, um, you know, feisty in the, in the tackle, backing each other up, you know, um, you know, just the kind of basic aspects of the game, which have, uh, haven't been in evidence so far this season. It just goes to show you can take you a long way. So you're looking at that first half, basically same matches, you know, I've kind of outrun Liverpool, kind of out-tackled them, you know, kind of out-muscled Liverpool to a certain extent. And if you remember uh, Klopp's comments, uh, Johnny, after the following game, it was pretty similar, what the mm-hmm. Liverpool manager was coming out with. He was saying, well, Fulham have outrun us. You know, they've outrun us, they've kind of out-tackled us. Now, that'd be the worry for me because, you know, traditionally under Klopp, that's just, that just doesn't happen uh, to this, uh, this Liverpool team. You know, they don't get they don't get bullied, they don't get outrun, they don't get outfought. But it's happened, you know, almost twice already in the opening couple of games uh, uh, this season. So that's the worry for Liverpool kind of going forward. For me, we've spoken about it as well b- before the game, I think, in terms of where they might just be a little bit short in that central mid- midfield area. I think they're in a little bit of transition there and will be over the kind of next year and a half in terms of reinforcing in that area of the pitch. But um, teams are taking advantage of that a little bit. Fulham did the opening day of the season. And Manchester United have shown none of that really the opening two games of the season. Uh, we're in the ascendancy in that respect. You know, more energy, look more mobile, more dynamic in their movement, that kind of front three. Uh, you know, McTominay to a little bit, gives you a little bit of that Johnny in central midfield, doesn't yeah. he? You know, not, not a huge amount of quality at times, but he's got the legs, he can get around the pitch and pose himself a little bit. Uh, two centre halves have been good, Varane. Martin has been really pumped up, John, isn't he? The left-sided centre-half. Well, I wanted to bring you in on him, actually, because um, our boy uh, Ronan outside tells me that, you know, it doesn't matter that he's only five foot nine, which obviously is an outlier as a centre-back. You weren't the tallest centre-back in the world. No, it doesn't, I think it does matter, mm. uh, to be fair. It's not everything. If you're marking yeah. Haaland, it's, or if you're marking, uh, you know, Mitrovic, you think it probably does matter, does it? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It depends how smart you are. You know, five or nine players recognise that. And obviously, if they're smart operators, you can still mark somebody and you can still affect them without out jumping them. You know, you can use your body strength and you can be clever. You can knock them off balance. You know, is he streetwise in that respect? We'll wait and see. But as long as the other parts of your game are pretty, are pretty, um, uh, exceptional it shouldn't be a, a, a huge problem he looks quite mobile to me I know he has, hasn't gone great from the first couple of games but he, he seems pretty um, quick enough over the, the ground I think he's a decent read of the game little bits that I saw in the first couple of games games I've seen him play he's quite competitive he's forward up tonight Johnny isn't he a couple of times probably a little bit too much to be honest with you got himself involved a couple of times but at least he's been at it he's been making tackles making physical contact with people and defending his area of the pitch very well Varane's look very assured alongside him as you would expect such an experienced player so that actually looked a bit of a parent tonight I've got to be honest with you yeah and I think what's helped uh, Martin is what must have helped him is the fact that the manager stuck with him had a big decision to make in terms of who to park on the bench tonight it was either going to be him Varane was going to come into the uh, the team tonight you felt and it's going to be Maguire and Martinez I think would have been a big blow for Martinez so early in his Manchester United career if Ten Hag had to put him on the bench could have really shook him up a bit and affected his confidence I think the fact uh, the fact that his manager has backed him and put Maguire England international England captain on the bench and put his confidence in the uh, in the young centre half has actually given him a lot of confidence oh, and he's responded. I think he's off is he? Oh, that's very close. This is this is going to be interesting. Look, he might like be on. Rashford has scored, but this is definitely subject to VR. Yeah. The pass was on. I think he might have delayed it a small yeah, bit. Maybe I think he's, he's on because I Here think he's go. smart enough. He's smart enough. Rashford, this stage is created to know. Just check your run. Don't go too early. Just wait, wait. I've got the pace to get away from the last Liverpool defender. I'll be amazed if he's caught offside they, they, there. They've they looked close. into this trap the whole night, haven't they? Just quick, like they're they're caught out. A quick ball, bang bang. Liverpool were just so open here. I thought, here we go. Yeah, it's but quick, I, but a lot most of the players in the opposition half. It's a mistake. It's a mistake from Jordan Henderson. Then and Virgil Van Dijk gets done to a certain extent. So Joe Gomez, what Gomez has done, they do it all the time. Gomez isn't running in a straight line back towards his penalty box. He's holding his line, checking for offside here. He's holding his line. He might be is he fractionally off. off there. Is I think he just he's just fractionally slightly off. off. This is a big, big moment. Um, I'm, I'm not going to exaggerate, but this is a big moment. I think in 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 Ten Hag's early reign for Manchester United because two 0 it's just I off. I think he's off. Yeah. Oh, so surprised at him there. So surprised. He's experienced enough now, Marcus Rashford. He's been in this situation, this situation more often than not. He knows. Hold your run. Don't stray offside. He's got. I know it's Joe Gomez. He's up against, but he's ra- lightning quick himself. He's given the goal. He's given the goal. Is he given it? Oh. It said onside. He looked offside. You were wrong. You were wrong when you said he was onside. You were wrong when he said he was offside, and you were wrong again. But he was actually onside. Kenny, you were right all along. He was onside. He was literally yeah, he was. inches I, onside. Yeah, Manchester United 2, Liverpool nil after 53 minutes.
Yeah, and just amazing, just small detail, isn't it? Heavy touch from Jordan Henderson. Virgil van Dijk had a little bit of a nibble, didn't he, uh, to try and win the ball after that. He kind of lost it. But even then, it wasn't panic stations. I'm going to say it again. Uh, Liverpool got caught against uh, Crystal Palace, if you remember the uh, Zaha goal. Uh, oh, oh. They're so close, so half close, chance, Liverpool to a goal Liverpool. a minute later. Unbelievable ball outside the left foot by Harvey Elias. Yeah. Uh, and then, I don't know, was it Milner down the right? Cleared off the line. Hey, the point I was just making there, that Zaha goal against Liverpool. If Nat Phillips and Virgil van Dijk drop early into the space before Eze plays that ball in behind, uh, Zaha doesn't score that goal. And there was another example there. Joe Gomez is in a straight run uh, with Rashford. If he makes the decision just to run as fast as he can towards the edge of the 18-yard box, Johnny. Mm. Rashford doesn't get that ball. But what he does, he holds his line. Liverpool and a half are drilled in this fashion. You don't drop into the space to cover the space. You hold. You hold. You hold that line for as long as you can. And basically, you keep both your fingers crossed and all your toes crossed that that opposition attacker is going to walk into an, an offside position. Mm. And don't get me wrong, at times, more often than not, yeah, it goes in their favour. But the very best forwards, and Rashford for me is more is this very experienced operator now. No, they've just got to hold, check their run, hold, hold, and when they get played, they're going to be running into empty grass. And that's what happened there. Just Joe Gomez, watch it again. He just checks his run. He checks his run. He's drilled into, I'm not going to recover into the space. I'm going to hold, 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 and bank on that offside decision. This, this is crazy stuff, Kenny, because Manchester United are notionally the team in crisis here. We've Rashford nearly putting them 3 0 up. Liverpool look all over the shop defensively. This is a team who are now on the cusp of having one point from their opening three games. And I want to say there, there, there are serious worries here if you're a Liverpool fan because they're, they're, they were nearly 3 0 down here. Manchester United uh, with a corner now to maybe put on some pressure Liverpool look all over the, the shop at times yeah I wouldn't specifically say just um, like uh, cross the defensive line I've spoken about that goal there uh, in particular the detail we spoke about the first goal in terms of Trent Alexander-Arnold getting caught that was the big problem uh, there I just think it's um, it's a collective thing in terms of Liverpool and we've spoken about it in terms of United have maintained those energy levels second half and they have real pace Real pace across that front line. A lot of talk, Ronaldo. How do you compliment him? You've got to get pace. This is the end him. of Ronaldo. Is it looking at this tonight? Oh, I think so. Yeah, mm. I think so. I think yeah, it's kind of that the performance where you you look and you think, well, this is the way. This you look is the at way dynamic, fast now. players. Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. So on counter attack now, and that was a counter attack. Liverpool on the attack ball popped out, and immediately you got players and operating in a high areas of the pitch who you fancy could they could do damage here because of that pace Ronaldo gets the ball there's no centre half in the world that's going to be uh, front and he picks the ball up in the halfway line he's going he's to uh, run past you we know the quality he has in terms of finishing ability but in terms of counter-attack and Ronaldo's kind of more or less no good to you but you're talking about Rashford you're talking about Martial you're talking about Sancho you're talking about Alanga these type of players, you know, they'll give you a real kind of pace Fabinho uh, on the counter-attack. Yeah, Fabinho. Um, yeah, we uh, David Brady there expressing his love uh, for Kevin McStay and Lee McHale. Um, if you want to send us some love, it's 53106 and on the social channels. I want to reflect a little bit. I, I don't get to spend that much time with Kenny Cunningham and often spending time with him brings me back to the days of uh, when you played in the Premier League and I was thinking... Oh, my... forget about that, John. Well, uh, I can it, reflect it, on my years in the Premier League. There's a top... We got Liverpool and Manchester United on the yeah, telly. We, we've done our reflections on Kenny's career. I'm just trying yeah, to think of I was my, say, my, my earliest Man United Arguably. Liverpool memory is was was an unbelievable game in early 1994 when Manchester United went three 0 up um, yeah. at Anfield. Unbelievable goal by by uh, Dennis Irwin and uh, two goals from Nigel Clough and uh, Neil Ruddock header. Remember got, got that. Back. Remember what that an absolute header, yeah. early days of Sky Sports. Had to I think I had to cycle to the neighbours in the dark to watch. We didn't have Sky at the time. Um, what's your earliest memory actually? Of this this these two heavyweights. Oh, gee, that's a hell of a shout now to be honest. I remember a couple of earliest memory I can't. My memory wouldn't be that great. I probably couldn't remember one earlier than that one, John. Mm. And I'm an, eight, I'm an 80s child. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of big Liverpool victories at, uh, at, at Old Trafford uh, over the years. I'm trying to think uh, uh, trying to think at Anfield. That three, three all is a good shout, to be honest with you. United had a good record generally speaking though, didn't they at Anfield? Oh yeah, that, oh that yeah, totally. Up. That's the Ferguson years, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and in I fairness... I don't remember, I'm not, I mean, this is, look, Jordan Henderson, we spoke about this before again. In fairness, Kenny, you did call this forehand, like Henderson has had a fairly ineffect, ineffective game and Liverpool's midfield in general just hasn't been able to impose itself. Miller's 36, he's obviously still trying, Fabinho's come on though here. 
Yeah, so this is it. So this is the challenge for Liverpool. And it's going to be a problem because they're not going to make any more pours. This is it. This is what they have to go with this season. Look, I'm not talking about Liverpool are falling off a cliff. Mm. You're not going to drop out a top, top four, a top six maybe. But in terms of making big strides in terms of Manchester City, I don't see it this year because I see a drop off in Liverpool. It was there last season in terms of that central and midfield area. We've seen it now again tonight. Jordan Henderson pulled off after 60 minutes and you're bringing on Fabinho Fabinho isn't going to bring a huge amount of legs and athleticism and energy to Co- this Liverpool team Co- either is he a couple of questions for you then um, and Football on Off the Ball is brought to you by Sky all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports BT Sport and Premier Sports uh, this is an anonymous texter uh, what does Kenny think of Trent going into midfield <sighs> there's a lot to be said for it uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so to be honest with you no because I don't think he gives you anything more defensively in central midfield. He'll get on. He'll get on the ball. We know how good he is technically. His uh, uh, his range of passing, etc. And he'll get nearer the the box. We know he's got a decent shot on him. But does he help Liverpool defend? This is my this is my thing about Liverpool at the moment. That in midfield, are they as solid defensively or you know as dynamic as they were previously when they're at their best? No. Is Trent Alexander going into central midfield going to help them in terms of their defensive structure, defensive city, and central midfield? No. Why? Because we can see how he defends in the normal right back position. Is he suddenly going to become a good defender in central midfield? No. So I don't think that's what Liverpool need. I think they need more of a solid defensive base. They need more dynamic players like you know box to box, all action, high energy, like all round players. I'm talking, I'm talking top class central midfielders. Don't, Is it don't an indictment of Klopp then? And uh, one texter says the LFC fan club in the studio is having a meltdown. I'm not sure about that now, but is it an indictment of Klopp? that in a game of this nature, three games into the season, their midfield includes Henderson and a 36-year-old James Milner. Well, you're never, you're never quite sure, are you? I think if you were to ask Klopp at the end of last season, um, if there's one player in the world we can go and get you, if the owners had said to Klopp at the end of the season, one player you want us to get, we'll go and get him, who would it be? I think it would have been a top-class, uh, central, young up and coming, top class, the best who were around. Mm. I think that's who he would have taken. I think he would have taken Jude Bellingham mm. if he could have. I think that's the type of player that he would have wanted. He hasn't come out and said that, which I think is fair. You've got to respect the players who are already uh, in the dressing room and, and have been who've played well so uh, well for him. Henderson in particular has been absolutely outstanding. You know what I mean? I don't have to uh, uh, pay him any plaudits in terms of the impact he's had at Liverpool Football Club. But his, his stars on the wane to a certain extent. That that's no Chris and that's the way it is. Milner looks legless there in fairness. I mean, but that's been the case. You can't, yeah, he's thirty six, but you can't you can't criticize. Look at the space you can't here. criticize look at the space him for that. Here, Kenny. Look at this. Yeah, but this is it. This is so it. open. Look, yeah, to go le- if they go left here, it's three 0 and Liverpool are getting away with it. Uh, this is mad. You go into the night. Manchester United are in crisis. It's all over the, the Irish Times here. The Ten Hag and Ken Early United constantly delving into the past to look for solutions for the present. And then tonight they had a bit of a protest before the game. No real word about Liverpool have had a patchy start to the season, and the narrative changes somewhat. If Manchester United, all the questions are like, well, what's happened to Liverpool now? Yeah, but I think it's there. I think you can. Uh, I think you can see it. You know, like I said, the things that I've spoken about. I've been watching Liverpool obviously for the last years. I ha- have previously. So when they're at their very be- at their best and their peak, like I mentioned a couple of years ago, that front three, the, the midfield three of Wijnaldum, Henderson at at his peak, Fabinho, Wijnaldum uh, very much at, at his peak as well. You know what I mean? It was absolutely uh, phenomenal. Mm. It really was. They were an absolute uh, machine, monsters. I think uh, Klopp called them. One, it was that was. <sighs> You know that was the chance. That, that was accurate in terms of the description, but I think it's just changed Liverpool in terms. Of, and it's a natural uh, evolution. This is what happens. Players uh, get old. You know, physically they kind of uh, levels drop off a little bit, uh, and we're seeing that. So now, yeah, the onus is on Klopp uh, to recognise that and replace it. But I, I don't think I think he can see it as well. I'm sure he can. Now he might point to uh, Thiago and uh, Harvey Elliott being the future. I'd I'd have me I'd have me. Uh, I'd have question marks. Thiago's about injury injury prone, and he's what is he thirty odd? Yeah, but even if he's not injury prone, if he was fit for me. Thiago's not the answer. Thiago's really? a lovely footballer, wonderful uh, technician, but again, he's not a good defender. Does he make them better defensively? Liverpool in centre midfield? No, he's not a particularly good athlete, not particularly quick off the ground, a wonderful footballer. So does he add a different dimension? Is there is there more creativity in that Liverpool midfield when he plays ahead of Milner? Absolutely. Does he make him stronger defensively? No. I tell you what, their, their bench is far from impressive. Adrian Davies, Fabinho, who's come on, Simicas, Cavallo, Clark, Besetovic, Phillips, Van der Berg. A lot of Van der Berg. I think some players, Liverpool fans, might not even necessarily have heard of there. And uh, we do wish uh, Jeannie Van Aldum the best as well. Serious injury confirmed by Roma, which obviously puts his. Um, 
future uh, for the moment anyway in doubt um, but Liverpool missing him tonight Kenny we're going to have to reflect on some other games over the weekend um, I didn't actually get the game live a couple of texts in as well hopeful Arsenal fan here but are the Gooners City's closest challengers this season well Arsenal have started they've signed very well they've started very well they've won the first three games that's from Brian and Lucan you know, I don't think it's cra- crazy really? talk. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's crazy talk. A year ago, you would have uh, laughed that off. I think is Jesus that, the saviour? Uh, not just Jesus. I tell you, I think he's much of a saviour. Saliba, from what I've mm. seen at centre half. I'd actually have to ask questions as to why he was left in France that mm. long. His performance, like opening day this season at Crystal Palace, it was like phenomenal. And he, if he's been playing at that level for the previous six months, what Arsenal lost out with Champions League spot, Johnny, right. by what? Last last yeah. game, game of the uh, last season. Last couple of games, yeah. And you yeah. can't tell me if that young fella hadn't been at the football club la- uh, last six months of last season, he wouldn't have made a difference because he looks a really accomplished centre half. He for me is just as important, has been just as impressive. I love Zinchenko as well. I uh, I don't love. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not quite buying the loving into Zinchenko. I thought that was a good deal for Manchester City getting him out the door for 35 million. I've got to be honest with you. I think he's a better centre midfielder. Okay. And he is a, a left back. He's not, certainly not a better left back than uh, Tierney. I mean, Tierney's fit. Tierney goes into the team mm. a left back. I think he's been bought as a centre midfielder. I think he's a better centre midfielder than Xhaka and I think that's where he'll go when Tierney gets himself uh, fit. Odegaard, lovely footballer. Yeah, lovely. Oh, the front four. Mm. We could talk all day about. Brian him. and Lucan is loving this. Yeah. Oh, Saka, uh, Martin, uh, Nelly, Jesus, uh, Odegaard, Smith Rowe I'd mentioned as well. Absolutely phenomenal young talent. Them four, for me, I mean, they're the future. But I mean, the big challenge is going to be keeping them. Saka at the moment is talking about a new contract. Yeah. Trying to get him to extend. That would be absolutely massive. He, for me, is the jewel in the ground. Bukayo Saka, absolutely exceptional. Could easily walk into he 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 play he starts in like the Manchester City and Liverpool teams for you me. Love, you love him. Oh, yeah. he's, he's an absolutely phenomenal player. I think he can add a little bit more even in terms of final product goals in the I think there's even more to come from him. Mm. I think he's an um, outstanding uh, young talent. And Arsenal are in a great place in terms of their options uh, high up the pitch. And it looks as if potentially they might have solved one of the issues at centre half. I think Ben White will go back in alongside Saliba. Uh, Tommy Yashu comes back into the team that probably mean Gabriel comes out of the team no bad thing still got a couple of mistakes in him but mm. he's a good number three he's a good backup centre half to, uh, centre half to have good goalkeeper now between the sticks top class left back in Tierney they're on the up pre- really uh, uh, they're beyond on the up they're actually there they've all, almost arrived part in midfield physical presence all action speaking about Liverpool tonight lack of energy in there real kind of physical presence you look at party when he's playing at his best He's that type, isn't he? Bit of a mm. monster, getting around the pitch, box and box, making tackles, high energy, very competent in possession. Again, that's what Arsenal have needed. So, yeah, they're very much a really exciting times for Arsenal going forward. Laura and Sligo, what has Kenny made of Erling Haaland so far? How would he approach him as a defender? Yeah, he's a tough one. <laughs> I can't believe how he's changed physically. I've obviously watched as much of, uh, as I, I've watched a lot of him actually play in, in Germany. Even when he first signed at Dortmund a couple of years ago, now. He's almost unrecognisable. Become a monster. Oh, phenomenal. It's high. He's grown. He's still... Uh, Guardiola made a comment. He's actually grown since he's been at the, the football club. Not just his height. He's been in the gym. Pumped him. His physical condition It's unbelievable. He's an absolute beast. Like You know what I mean? But what I like about him, John, he's smart. For someone so young, he seems very mature. His game understanding is at a really high level. And game understanding as a centre forward, generally speaking, is in terms of where your positional sense, where you operate, when you drop, when you look to go in behind, timing your runs in behind, very rarely gets caught off. You see, uh, we'll talk about it a bit after the break, but you see that ball in the second half where um, he, like De, De Bruyne played it around the other side of the centre back and Haaland was immediately running. He was running before the ball, got in, muscled the centre back out yeah, of the keeper way. Came out keeper came out. But you were just like, this is going to be so good to watch when you're trying to deal with De Bruyne playing in this land. De Bruyne is passing as well. But uh, Haaland, is he a shoe in for? Top score, do you think injuries permitting? Yeah, I think he's a shoe. And if he stays fifth for the majority, yeah, if he plays enough games, and that'll be down to Guardiola in terms of rotation, because I think Guardiola knows he's probably the difference between yeah, Manchester City coming up short again in the Champions League and actually going and winning it over That's the next the couple of years. That's the thing, isn't it? Jeff? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt for me, he's the, he's the difference. People talk about false nines and to be fair Manchester City have had a, a reasonable success with that they've won a league title playing with false number nines for the majority of the, of the season I'm sure that would be the counter argument where we can't play with a false nine we won a title with a false nine yes you have but for me to win a, a, a Champions League a player with the qualities that Haaland has in this uh, Manchester City team elevates them makes them even better so I think they're in a, in a far better place and I think 
I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised this squad Manchester City have with Haaland at the, at the top of it. I know Champions League. You can argue. I don't argue the fact you need a little bit of luck. I don't really think uh, luck comes into it, but I think the knockout nature of the Champions League, the, the competition. You know, a bad twenty minutes, a bad fifteen minutes in one game, and you can be out. Such is the nature of the competition. But I still, I think they're best placed uh, with Haaland in the team now. Phillips as well joining. I think they'll never get a better chance to go and win this competition in the next uh, two years. The only thing you would say is, like, Newcastle scored thrice and uh, did create chances as well. It was that spell in the yeah. first half where they looked um, they looked like they were opening yeah. them up quite a bit. But this is Manchester City. Uh, the way they play. Yeah, but yeah, but it's way they've actually... I mean, if you look at them the last year, a lot of talk about the inverted kind of fullback. Yeah. You look at what the Manchester City there now, I've just never seen the likes of it. Now... I understand it to a uh, to a certain extent what they're doing. You know, Cancelo and Walker going into central midfield positions to receive the ball. So yeah, yeah, you're getting overloads in there. You know, so you're getting plenty of touches in there. Then maybe you're getting little overloads against opposition teams. But you're sacrificing a bit of natural. Kyle Walker, right? Kyle Walker is the. I don't think he's the best uh, fullback in the world, but he's up there, the top bracket. And he's he's up there because people recognise as a fullback his ability to get forward on the overlap underlap, running into space, getting beyond wingers, driving to the end line, putting crosses into the box as good as enemies. Phenomenal athlete pace, mm. and he can use that kind of pace in wide areas when he's coming from a deep position onto the ball, playing little one twos with the winger, continuing in behind. Very little players can live with him. It's just that raw pace that he's got in terms of getting in behind. I'm looking at Kyle Walker now, and he's he's playing as a central midfielder. Kyle Walker cannot play central midfield he's not a central midfield player he can play in tight areas on the half turn but that's what he's trying to do and he's not in the area pitch in an area of the pitch now in an orthodox right back position where we can see the best of him so I don't understand that that doesn't make sense to me and people say to me oh this is amazing what's happening you see Kyle Walker it's phenomenal it's so you know this is revolution that we're seeing Guardiola is a genius and I'm thinking well Okay, might be a genius in some respect, but I don't see the sense in that. Mm. Cancelo, to a certain extent, is different. Can play in central midfield, looks like an orthodox centre midfielder. He's actually comfortable in there, can actually impact the game a little bit more. But I'm not buying it. And what we saw against Newcastle was City overloading that central midfield, uh, Johnny, with their full backs in there, losing the ball. Uh, Newcastle going and pressing, being a little bit sloppy in possession. Newcastle winning the back. And then Newcastle players driving into that space down the sides mm. of the Manchester City centre halves. And John Stones and Diaz are like spinning, going back towards the edge of their penalty box. They're looking where, in my day, when teams counterattacked, immediately I looked over my shoulder to my fullback to where my fullback was to scream at him to get in get contact back. with me. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I couldn't have played in the... Mo- I can't play in the modern game the way centre halves have been asked to play. I would have been too exposed. Good, I, just getting a bit have, of a I wouldn't have had a career. That is yeah. an absolute fact. So, so you had quite a career, yeah. It's good we're getting a bit of in my day, and like we're we're talking about the Liverpool Man United three all, but that game and like Guardiola talked about it afterwards. It was so good to watch. To be fair, yeah, it was so good to watch. But he, but but he he's got a. I I'd like to think Guardiola was looking at thinking we, we conceded, conceded three, three goals, goals today. Yeah, we, we could have had, we could have conceded more. Mm. Why has that happened? Mm. Why mm. were we so open I'm on the transition? Why did they hurt us? You've got to be looking at that as well as a as well as looking at oh it was great Cancelo Walker coming in oh, I was amazing those little overloads and there clever little one touch Newcastle couldn't live with it but I thought generally speaking Newcastle uh, done well with it and if I was a Newcastle player in that kind of midfield that uh, a Newcastle player with a narrow midfield three what I don't want to do if I'm Willock and Joe Linton in a narrow midfield three I don't want to be getting dragged out to the touchline all the time having to track Walker and Cancelo on the overlap but that's generally what has to happen in a narrow three you've got to get over there and deal with it but they're not being asked to do that because Manchester City fullbacks are coming into a central midfield position so they can actually hold their position on the inside that's where they want to be nice and narrow as a midfield three those Newcastle players and no one when they win the ball back all they have to do is pop that ball to the outside uh, areas of the pitch and they've got players with the pace the likes of uh, Willock Joe Linton Al Moran and Alan St. Maximin who can actually race into that space down the sides of the pitch knowing that there's nobody in those full back areas to go and deal with them they're, they're going to be, yeah, yeah very, that's how I saw it very interesting team going forward at the moment Liverpool's title uh, challenge is absolutely hanging on by a thread here they're 2-0 down with 70 minutes going Old Trafford and defending for their lives at the moment as Manchester United press ahead uh, Football cards. on off the ball, yellow card for simulation from Fernandez, who's had a good game to be fair. Football on off the ball is brought to you by Sky, all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sports, and Premier Sports. We'll be back after these. Football on off the ball with Sky. Watch every live Premier League game this season on Sky Sports, BT Sport, and Premier Sports. 
students throughout Ireland trust the Institute of Education to help them achieve better academic results. We are now enrolling for our weekly grinds classes for first to sixth year students. Tuition is delivered weekly, online and in our Leeson Street campus in Dublin. Students also receive comprehensive notes and recordings of all classes. Book your place today. Visit instituteofeducation.ie Your next move matters, so why not move better? Start your move to permanent TSB today. Apply in-app for our award-winning current account. So don't just move bank, move better. Apply in-app today. Applications for Explore Current Account in-app in sole name for over 18 personal customers. Residents of Republic of Ireland only. Fees and charges, terms and conditions apply. Awarded Bunkers.ie Best Current Account 2022. Permanent TSB PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Join VHI Healthcare today for just €61.99 per adult per month on our First Care 500 day-to-day -day plan and unlock a wide range of services. Search VHI First Care to join today. Terms and conditions apply. VHI Healthcare DAC trading as VHI Healthcare is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Football on Off the Ball. With Sky. Watch over 400 games this season from the Premier League, WSL, Scottish Premiership, and EFL. Live on Sky Sports. Welcome back to Off the Ball, Johnny Ward and Kenny Coney. I'm bringing you all the way till 10 o'clock. And uh, if you're a Liverpool fan, you're getting uh, very, very anxious here. Manchester United. Ooh, nearly 3 0 up, uh, but 2 0 up. Mark, Marcus Rashford, oh, he's transformed. Just, he's what, what's going on? Of old, Marcus Rashford of old, picking the ball up close to the touch. Did he cut his hair or something? <laughs> no, is it like what? What just is a little this bit is of just, this, I'm actually delighted. I'm delighted from a personal perspective to see yeah. Rashford um, get that mojo back. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's, such a, he's such a talent and he's had such a difficult. Uh, time for the last couple of years talking going to Paris Saint-Germain I thought that was a poor move I thought oh mm. god no you know that, that could be the, that could be the end of him so I was actually pleased to see him looks as if he's going to hang around and tonight oh my god it's been like, like a throwback you know running at players taking on players 1v1 burst of acceleration just kind of a little bit of confidence and it can happen like that Johnny you can get your confidence back that quickly you know a game like this you know against Liverpool so much at stake you know, suddenly you start well, a couple of things uh, happen for you. That feel-good factor returns. Crowd are behind you, singing your name. And all of a sudden, you're back there. You're back to where you were three or four years ago. Yeah. yeah. Stephen Kenny was in Tala yesterday, um, spotted at half-time, reflecting on some past glories with ex-Longford Town players. But it was a good weekend for Stephen Kenny because of situation with... Uh, obviously, his goalkeepers are in good nick. But from central defensive... Um, perspective we've actually got a text in which I'll, I'm going to break for myself here does Kenny ever remember suffering a crisis of confidence during his playing days because I was one of that myself because you know as Most a, weeks uh, <laughs> as, Most as, week. as a striker obviously you know <laughs> confidence yada yada is, is that as a centre back does that affect you oh we're all different I don't think it's a centre back I think it's an individual mm. thing I think it's a mindset I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean that wasn't a joke uh, what I said there yeah I mean it, it was it was a struggle for me uh, uh, quite a bit of the time I've got to be honest with you I played kind of right when I went up to the Premiership uh, with Wimbledon for the first time I played right back for probably uh, my first five, uh, five years there Is that Joe Kinnear or who was it? Yeah Joe was, yeah. Yeah, Joe was manager there and we were in the Premier League uh, obviously and I was coming up against uh, players there. I was coming up against like Ryan Giggs <sighs> Who was that? Ginola. Perry was centre back was he at the time? Or? Uh, Chris Perry was there Perry, yeah, yeah 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 Who was your back four? Oh for Jay's you're Bloody you're hell, John! Premier, you're making your Premier League debut. You're not going to forget that. Indeed, uh, I, I think it was Sullivan uh, Chris Petty was there. Yeah, um, Alan Kimball I left. Yeah. There wouldn't be too many names people would recognise. Kind of Alan Reeves, Dean Blackwell. Those uh, good players, actually good, mm. good footballers. But the point I was making was the the step up was absolutely phenomenal uh, for me. So you know, get myself one v one with gigs. Uh, Known these players and the qualities which they had. Mentally, it wasn't wasn't easy for me in terms of like generating a sufficient kind of confidence and belief in myself to actually put myself up against these players, and it was a little bit of a struggle. I got to be honest with you, to the extent where where if you didn't start if it didn't start well the first 10, 15 really, minutes, yeah. yeah, it could be difficult. Mm -hmm. And these lads have put you to the sword. You know what Giggs was like in a, in his prime. He'd, you know what I mean? He'd, he'd wipe the floor to you, and it was too, there was loads. It was every week. Janola. Oh God! Who are the other left wingers? Oh, pacey, like technically good. Were you mainly? I so what? So my point was, it was a, that was a real that was a real fight for me in terms of keep myself up, you know, not getting too despair, getting too down on myself, and you know, just keep believing and 
and that type of thing. That was that was always a struggle for me. Uh, Jordan, my career, I've got to be honest with you. And for good reason, because I didn't have the qualities where I could carry myself with I a lot you. of with a lot of confidence, John. You know what I mean? I wasn't the quickest thing over two legs. Like, technically, physically, I wasn't the most imposing qualities you'd look for in an orthodox kind of uh, defender. So, And I knew that, you know what I mean? So that, w- that was where the kind of worry and the bit of dread came from on a week-to-week basis. So I had to kind of fight uh, that a absolutely. little bit. Absolutely. I, I hope that answers the Texas question. Liverpool are battling um, manfully enough, to be fair, um, to hopefully sneak an equaliser but 10 minutes left it's still 2-0 as I was saying there so Stephen Kenny and Tally yesterday uh, bore uh, the expression of a happy man because uh, Andrew Mobile by all accounts had an excellent game for Norwich Friday night Yeah, saw that. some West Brom fans already calling for Darrow Shades who made their captain who apparently was in good form at the weekend the early game scored the early game on the Saturday obviously was the toughest uh, challenge for our centre backs because Nathan Collins uh, was up against Harry Kane it went swimmingly in the main but he slightly switched off for the corner, did he? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I'd be, yeah. I'd be more interested in the quality of his overall performance, and I was really impressed with that. I mean, up until the Harry Kane goal, I was looking at him thinking, wow, he's doing fantastic here. You know, he's, he's achieved so much in su- such a short period of time. Gone to Wolves for a big, big fee. Pressure on his shoulders uh, there as well, and he started the season, what I can see, really well, and defended really well up until that. But yeah, he could nitpick on the goal. Thought he'd done well initially. Obviously, he had to physically impose himself, which he tried to do. Harry Kane, such a clever little, op- such a clever operator. Just the last minute, just took a step away from him. You know, um, Nathan just turned his shoulder, showed him his his number, and boom, the rest is history. That's the that's what I'm talking about. That's the level that he's at, and he learned that. But his overall performance, I was really impressed with, him and how he finished the season for Ireland, it's amazing. That's it. It's probably on about six months ago, John. We probably would have said if you had to say name your back three, you you would have been Shane Duffy. Egan. Uh, John Egan and a another, you know what I mean. Given my back three are O'Shea, Omo Bamadelli, and Collins. I want us to go with that going but forward. But this is what I'm saying. What are, what are you saying to me? You're the centre back. No, they, well that's what I'm saying. That's the discussion now. What a goal. great goal. goal! So Liverpool have totally, totally deserved this on on their recent form. Bruno Fernandez, who's already booked by the way, is holding on to the ball, not giving it back to Salah, uh, who's <laughs> was a little bit of Salah's had a relatively quiet game. But to be fair to Liverpool, nine minutes left, they have threatened this and they've they pushed hard. Bruno Fernandes is playing a slightly dangerous <laughs> game here. So they're trying to... Ah, oh, I'm not having this. Look at this, Ken. He's holding his face. Oh, it's pantomime. Stop! This is what absolutely you, this is ridiculous. pantomime stuff. So Fernandes is holding on to the ball like a petulant <laughs> child in the playground as Liverpool are obviously trying to get it back from the corner from which they've scored. Fernandes, who's only been booked for simulation, by the way, is holding on to the ball. Klopp is looking for a yellow card here, I think. He's took a chance there because Salah's trying to take the ball off. He won't give it up. That's not unusual. We see that. Just seeing the goal here, but a, a corner in from Trent Alexander-Arnold gets a headed to the edge of the box. Uh, Harvey Elliott helps it back in. I think it's a shot in the swivel from Firmino. Salah with the header. Yes, uh, the guy uh, uh, makes the save, just pops out to Salah. Great reactions from him, heads of first time into the back of the net. But it was after that, what happened after that was comical. Fernandez grabbing the ball, fair enough. Salah's trying to wrestle it off. But at some stage, usually you usually release the ball, mm. don't you? But he steadfastly, for probably the next 20 seconds, refused to give the ball up. I think Salah makes slight contact with him there and he's holding his face. This is why we love football, Kenny, though. I mean, there's eight minutes to go here. We spoke about that amazing game in 1994. If Liverpool were to come back here, um, you know, it would completely change the narrative because Manchester United, they've deserved to be in front, but it's going to be 10 long minutes for them here. Yeah, no, they've got to, they got to see it out. They deserve to be in front, but they've got to see out the next uh, uh, 10 minutes and there's a big, big test for them now in terms of maybe confidence, that fragile confidence, that belief. It's great when you're tuning up, things are going your way. When the dynamic changes a little bit, the opposition, the team, Liverpool, Liverpool's quality uh, scores, then suddenly, you know, that confidence can be a little bit fragile. So, yeah, very interesting last 10 minutes. And that is uh, Ericsson, who's uh, shown, shown uh, I suppose, flashes in the game. Um, so we have uh, seven minutes to go. Ronaldo is coming on, as if we don't need and Ten Hag uh, looking very Problem is, it's going to take him ten minutes to get his boots and all, all his gear on. If it's uh, true to form for Ronaldo. Yeah, I doesn't, think... Doesn't get, him, doesn't get himself ready in a hurry, does he? Get off the bench and get on the pitch. No, he's, he's, play, he's, playing, he's playing a the diplomatic game, Ten Hag, though. He's starting, he's dropped Maguire. Ronaldo's not playing, but he is bringing Ronaldo on. And Manchester United have been very, very good. They've been dynamic, but they are under the cost here. Liverpool aren't the team they uh, are without having this uh, quality. Harvey Elliott, who's had a very good game, I think, on the ball here. Salah down the right. Trent Alexander cross into the box. 
Manchester United defending a little bit frantically uh, with 10 minutes to go, uh, which will bring us back to frantic defending from Ireland, which we've seen down the years. We now have two centre backs. Gonna name names. We've two uh, centre <laughs> Well, particularly during the, the late 90s, <laughs> early 2000s. The way you're talking, we've, we've seen some bang average orders defending. Uh, no, I, was I couldn't a big, disagree. I'm a big fan of Big Kenny, but they, we've, a, we've a new dynamic here in that Omo Bamadeli and Collins oh, yeah. can come out with the ball as well. These guys actually yeah. can, yeah. and I think Kenny will inculcate confidence yeah. in them in that regard. You're right, and we saw that in the uh, f- uh, home nations game against Ukraine last game of last season, didn't we? Yeah. In terms of the ball playing a Billy and Nathan Collins, we'd seen a playing right side of a three, but that central area, obviously the goal is, was obviously the icing on the cake, but his ability to step forward and play. Uh, Omar Bamadielli, we saw already in the Norris jersey prior to that, didn't in we? Serbia. As you're right, playing right of a three. And I think that's something which Stephen uh, values in terms of how he wants the team to play, in terms of style of play. Having sent the halves are very comfortable on the ball. We know how Shane Guffey's been an absolutely unbelievable servant to Ireland, and I'm sure will continue to be so. Who are your three, you know? If, if we were to say it is a three, who are your three at the back? Oh, I think... I'd... I think it's a tough call, but I think you're, at, at the moment, I think Nathan Consumer at the moment looks like he looks like he's ready to step into that central uh, defensive spot, middle of a, a three to me. And I think you're right when you're looking right side of that. Andrew Alma Bamadiele, from what we've seen already, he looks as if he's perfectly suited to that. And then maybe you're looking at the left side of the three. And then I think there's a, an argument there for Dara O'Shea and John Egan. I think John Egan, I'm still a big fan of John Egan. I think he's a very kind of smart uh, uh, smart defender. Is it I a think negative Darryl, the right footed? Do you know, we don't really have that left footed obvious centre back. Is it a negative or? I don't think it's massive. I think people say naturally, like saying naturally left sided, but when Darrow Shea plays there, it's, it's no coincidence. The, what, the advantage of him when he plays and when he cuts inside onto his right, right foot, he's got that massive switch of play. Mm. Darrow Shea is as good as anybody that I've seen in terms of 40, 50 yards. Really? Accurate. Oh, yeah. His long pass is as good as, as any. Well, it's. it's you can see in the modern game, Anderson and Crystal Palace, another good example of Virgil van Dijk. These these type of players, well, these type of balls weren't played. I I very I never hit a diagonal ball in my life playing uh, at centre half from, from left to right. It just wasn't expected. We actually weren't set up uh, to do it. It wasn't expected of us. But the game has changed in terms of making the, you know, the uh, the the pitch big. You know, stretching teams and looking for kind of big diagonals. So to play that way, you need defenders who are like capable of getting the ball and hitting accurate balls 40, 50 yards. And Darius as good as anybody. He's got a shift inside from that left side onto his right foot. But he's got he can hit that right, uh, you know, right wing or right wing back with a uh, with a uh, with accuracy. So yeah, I think he's definitely in the equation, Darius Shea. But John Egan as well for me. Darrell Leonard, I give a mention to as did well. Very well. I yeah, mean, I think he's been rock solid as well when he's been the team. And like I said, Shane Duffy clearly where it's got, goes without saying comes into the equation. Sometimes you can, you can you can break players down, John, in terms of oh, how quick is he, you know, his ball playing ability like we're kind of talking about. But sometimes like personality comes into as well, you know, leadership, experience. And I think that's where probably Shane has the edge mm. in, in that respect. But it's not everything. You know, you don't. Not every team puts the most experienced players, the eleven most experienced players, on the pitch. It's all about the right kind of balance. And Nathan Collins, for somebody so young and so inexperienced, he's just like taken the international football, isn't he? Absolutely no problem. He's absolutely reveled it, isn't he? He has reveled in. I think there's so much to look forward to there if we have a solid goalkeeper and back three, uh, which we definitely have. Um, uh, next time Kenny's on, maybe we'll have time to talk about some other positions if not tonight but we'll keep on the Premier League team here what happened to Chelsea I mean we heard about they had travel issues uh, going to the ground um, oh that's pretty weak it was ab- pretty weak It was when <laughs> he's mean, got to stay from uh, he should watch back in the day when we used to ah. travel up the air uh, travel up the M1 we used to meet at Tollington services the bomb but this is our uh, Wimbledon obviously playing up north so all that who few- did you meet? We, we, the coach the, <laughs> the coach had travelled from Wimbledon training ground to Tollington on the M1 right. but a lot of the lads could drive there if they wanted so they could get home early after again pick up their cars at home and go home Simpler so times. half so we'd all meet there so that'd be the congr- so everybody would meet everybody would dive off the coach yeah into the services and, and stack up for the journey wherever it was up to Manchester or up to North and I mean stack up I mean stack up KFC Burger King <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> two litre bottles of uh, Coca-Cola sweets pick and mix the, oh, the, the lot, the absolute lot came on. The, the amount that we, card school obviously at the back of the, uh, the coach. Only and that the was it. characters in those days. And that was it. That was the coach. Coach yeah. joining up and it was accepted. Fish and chip after the game, back on the coach, a few drinks and the, and the whole shebang. Like, you know what I mean? So look, I know the game moved on a lot more professional, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Don't start complaining. He's made a show of himself here, not only on those remarks, in, in the sense of this first world problem of not being able to get a plane, a plane for the coaching staff from London to Leeds which I thought <laughs> just shows how removed from reality this man is but his comments Tuchel's comments on, on the referee uh, irked you as well 
Ah, uh, yeah, no, I, I've no time for that whatsoever. And I like to, to shall I, I enjoy listening to him. Um, I think he's a very good uh, coach. He's very good eye uh, for the game. The impact he went in there in a sh- very short period of time at Chelsea, I think, was phenomenal last year in terms of taking to the, the uh, Champions League, etc. But uh, no, I haven't enjoyed some of the stuff this year. Certainly didn't enjoy how he spoke about Anthony Taylor. Mm. Like I said, I said early on the show, I thought it was a disgrace, and they, they should he should have the the book thrown at him in terms of some of the accusations, the insinuations which he made against the referee. I think he should have apologised him if he hasn't there uh, already. So I've absolutely no time for that. And even in that small comment about the coach, and that might seem a small thing, too negative. You know, it's too negative. I don't think it's the right thing. It's not the type of thing I want to hear if I'm in the dressing room with Chelsea player. I'm upset things aren't going well. I'm looking for a little bit of like leadership, a little bit of inspiration from my manager when he talks. I don't want to hear about complaining about trivial little matters. You know, more excuses, heap of more excuses, giving the players more excuses in terms I, of I, performance. I, I, I don't want to go on a climate crusade, but he's from Germany. The Rhine River is literally not, not working anymore because effectively because of climate change and he's given out about not being able to get a plane from London to Leeds now you did say it is a bat is it the A1 <laughs> Uh, you could take a couple of routes to be honest with you. Yeah. You could go M one A one. Look, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's a it's it's a it's a, it's a four hour trip wherever it is. Indies had a shocker way. for the first goal as well, and it's like the whole thing collapses because Chelsea were very good against Spurs. You'd have to say they should have won the game last week. Yeah, they this did. was just yeah, they I didn't did play see well. This they started all right, John. To be honest with you, opening a couple of they had a couple of kind of half a uh, couple of chances. Raheem Sterling etc. Didn't take them, but yeah, I think he knows he's um, he's undercooked in terms of the squad. And maybe a bit of frustration is coming out that he hasn't he hasn't been hasn't hasn't been back there. They haven't been able to get the players. Mm. They desperately need a centre half. I'd argue they possibly need two centre halves. Um, spoke about Liverpool tonight. Maybe a couple of pe- uh, players now lacking legs uh, in the team. I think you look at Thiago Silva now, who's been in one of the world's best. But again, he's the same. Looks as if his legs have uh, gone. They need uh, they need a right sided uh, centre half as well. Aspilicueta is the same. Like drop off from him. Reese James has played there, but he's got to play right wing back. He's one of the best right wing backs in the in the in the Premiership at the moment. So, yeah. So that's what I'm talking. He he's he needs players in. I think there's a bit of frustration there on Tuchel's part in terms of they haven't been able to get them in. There's the yeah. ongoing conversation about the centre forward. Uh, they need a centre yeah. midfielder of some quality has, as well. Yeah, he so just all had, of that. He, he has to, he has to grow up a bit as well. Be four minutes to go here in the injury time. We'll be back after these and update you. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Get all the football you love in one place Across Sky Sports, BT Sport And Premier Sports You look smug Don't disturb Genius at work Ah, my birthday You planning a surprise? There, done I have just switched our car insurance to AIG And saved a packet Happy birthday. Switch your car insurance to AIG. Buy online at AIG.ie and we'll give you a 65% discount if you are six years or over claim free, plus a 10% new business discount. Thank you, AIG. Normal underwriting acceptance criteria apply. Applies to new AIG direct car customers only. Minimum premium applies. Offer valid until December 31st, 2022. AIG Europe SA is authorised by the Luxembourg Ministry of Finance and supervised by the Luxembourg Commissioner for Insurance and is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business. Challenge yourself with Audi Rewards. Simply download the Audi Connect plug and play app to test yourself with driving challenges. Collect points along the route and reach new levels to redeem attractive rewards. Visit your local Audi dealer for complimentary Audi data plug installation and start your challenge today. Find out more at audi.ie forward slash rewards. Terms and conditions apply. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Watch over 400 games this season from the Premier League, WSL Scottish Premiership and EFL Live on Sky Sports Yeah, you're very welcome back Two minutes and change of injury time left and it's Manchester United 2, Liverpool 1 at Old Trafford It's been thoroughly engrossing from start to finish really Kenny Cunningham and um, this just... I don't know, I, I don't think many people saw this coming, but this would be deserved if Man United were to hold on. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking a lot during this uh, uh, second half. I've had my eyes off a, a little bit, so I'd love to, I, I will watch the second half again. But it's been better from Liverpool, I think, kind of a uh, uh, second half. But Manchester United have kind of kept at it. You know, we talk about maybe those energy levels dropping. There's been a lot of substitutions made, but they've kept that. I think it's important they see this game out now, Johnny. That's what I'd yeah. say. 
it's been a far better Manchester United performance but I think it'd be gut-wrenching if they were conceded so late only two minutes to go I think it's really important that they see out, see it out and get this victory and give them a little bit of a confidence and you know, give them a bit of a template going forward for the manager to go into the dressing room and say right this is it this is the template now this is what we have to replicate going, going forward in terms of the intensity mm-hmm. that we played at uh, the attitude, the energy which we showed. You know, we need to reproduce that week in, week out, going forward, and, and we start creeping up the table. What did you make of uh, the Leicester Southampton game? Very bad start for Leicester, and Bazunu getting his game time as well. Oh, it's great to see him. I mm. thought it was a great move from when he oh, uh, yeah. he made the move, Johnny, because I thought he got a chance of starting here. Because I looked at the other keepers there and I thought he's as good as anything they've got, if not better. Mm. So it's great he's been given the the opportunity. He's going to have plenty of practice, uh, plenty of opportunities to impress. I know that so that's how Dampton team because they can be blow hot and cold a little bit. So he'll have plenty of opportunities to show how good he is, how good his shot stop he is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think it's a great move for him. He's unbelievable, isn't he? I think in terms. Oh, he's of phenomenal. Prospects. I think the three lads are. I think there's not hasn't been enough talk about Mark, Mark Travers. He's been a yeah. regular in that Bournemouth team now for the past two years. The level uh, he's been playing at, I think we're absolutely phenomenal. And to think he's only our, our number three, you feel a bit feel a bit sorry for him. To be honest with you, Mark Travers. Between, between goalkeepers and centre backs, like if you mention like Lenehan, Egan, Duffy, um, and you could even put like Seamus Cole. Well, you look at there. England. You look at England at the moment in terms of centre half. Yeah. They are absolutely scratching, yeah. scratching around for a centre half. You can't tell me Nathan Collins wouldn't be in the equation now for that England team if Gareth Southgate was looking well, to Nathan. Be ahead of Maguire, surely. At the moment, yeah, absolutely. Not even getting his game yeah, here absolutely. Tonight. Be yeah. ahead of Tyrone Mings every day of the week. I'll, t- I'll tell you that as well. So yeah, so uh, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're right. Goalkeepers we all are agree. We blessed. better centre backs than England. <laughs> this is something better than them anyway. Um, it looks like um, definitely Manchester a size United. too big. That's uh, that's too jacket. That's food. You're not having it. No, I'm no expert myself. You'd be more of a fashion guru than me, John. But uh, what's what's gotta um, be a little bit tighter fit. No, would you reckon? Keith Andrews is into that sort of. He's he's oh, in the start of oh, games. Oh yeah, isn't yeah, he? yeah. Looks the part. It, Keith. Everything. The, it's a full time at Old Trafford. Ten Hag. Whether or not he looks the part, he's shook hands, shaking hands with uh, the. Man in the hoodie, Jurgen Klopp. This is massive. I mean, sport may uh, keep us going at times. It may be annoying us at times. It may seem trivial at times. And times like tonight, it just this is why we love it. This is an amazing, yeah. amazing game. And it's the beauty of football. You're you're, some, you're only one game away from turning your your whole whole season around, John. That's what you have to keep believing. That's what you keep instilling into the players. Look, we can turn this. Be here. One week's a long time on football. But Liverpool's but is, title challenge is gone now, is it not? One point from nine, and the way they're playing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you don't I haven't fancied anyway. it from the start of yeah, the you season don't for, anyway. for the reasons that I'm yeah. saying. And that's probably played out a little bit in terms of what we've seen in terms of the performance. People say players missing, but for me, fundamentally, not an awful lot of changes in this Liverpool team if those players come back. Curtis mm. Jones, Thiago, uh, that, I've, that I've spoken about, one or two players in different areas. The basic fundamentals don't change. Does that mean, does that mean there's going to be a massive drop-off in this Liverpool team? No, I don't. But in terms of can they chase down Manchester City, this year, I don't think they can. In fact, for me, they're looking over their shoulder at the teams coming uh, behind them, the likes of Arsenal, uh, Tottenham, and maybe to a smaller extent Chelsea, depending on the players that they can bring in. So that'd be the, that'd be the worry from a Liverpool perspective uh, going forward. I think they need to find something. But for me, the answer isn't within the present squad. They have to go outside into the market to rectify it. And that, that may not happen until next uh, probably next summer. So much talk about tonight, but... We mentioned Harry Maguire, like that. That's you know, it's probably over um, due, really. That down the bridge, top. you could be down the bridge next week, Harry. Well, it's 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 just uh, I don't know. I mean, this was Manchester United were quite good at the back tonight. Varane was good. Um, obviously, well, it's about know. partnerships, isn't it? Yeah, centre half, and not necessarily who's your two best. Uh, uh, centre half so that had been the case I probably would have only got maybe about five international caps in, in, instead of m- how many that I got it's all about partnerships and who maybe complements mm. each other and I just thought you, thought you saw the beginnings of a partnership there t- tonight between Varane and Martinez it looked a bit more comfortable Martinez alongside Varane and you can understand that Varane more of an athlete not, I wouldn't say more imposing than Maguire Maguire's a bit of a beast physically but athletically he's really kind of compromised that's right by the way it's just uh, reminding me you had 72 Ireland caps I mean I, I, I don't have any memories of thinking oh here we go Henry Cunny yeah, yeah, so forget it Kenny Cunny forget, it. <laughs> were, forget were, about me I, I've made me me point about that and stick with it so so these two <laughs> these two tonight uh, John you just you get a bit of a sense of looking at players they enjoy 
playing with yeah. each other. They're kind of feeding off, off each other. Now, it's only one game. Don't get me wrong. And Martino's still going to have his issues in terms of that lack of height, etc. But certainly Varane alongside him. And if he's smart and he's intelligent and he understands the game and he recognises what parts of his game he has to kind of fine-tune not to get exposed at this level, I certainly wouldn't be writing him off. And great scenes here, actually, seeing the Manchester United players with smiles on their faces. Ah, yeah. and, you know what I mean? That's great to see because they've been, they've been getting absolutely pummeled. People say rightly so. Where do, they, where do they finish the season, do you think? Because yeah, uh, we have to wrap up. Yeah, there's still a, bit, still a bit to do. Ask me that question with the transfer window shut and let's see mm. what players... Uh, that they have I don't see him uh, uh, top four but depending on what players they bring in is going to be key between now and the end of the window 72 caps for Ireland what was your favourite? Uh, I'd, I'd say me, probably my first one it's an obvious thing to say yeah versus oh, versus the gremlins in my head I was that nervous going on to the pitch oh, Czech Republic I think it was Czech Republic nothing game meaningless game on paper but everything meant you. everything yeah meant everything um, yeah it's been great having you on thanks a million Kenny cheers John yeah and uh, <laughs> it starts tonight with Owen Sheehan um, being sort of uh, amongst a crowd of Manchester United fans in a, an anti-Glazers uh, protest um, I think a night that would have started quite badly uh, for the Glazer family uh, didn't end too badly. Manchester United, everything is fine. They beat Liverpool 2-1 and suddenly the papers tomorrow are not about Manchester United. They're like, what's happened Liverpool? One point from three. Edgy, edgy performance at times uh, tonight. Jerry Gilroy and Shane Hannan will be live on OTB AM from 7.30am tomorrow. Daniel Harris will be on to talk Manchester United and Gareth Roberts will be on to talk Liverpool. I think the tables have turned uh, for a little bit uh, for now. Anyway, Nee Briggs will join the lads to discuss Ireland's win against Japan over the weekend. Sleep well. Get my ball and he out of grass. Give you a move for the perfect pass. Give my ball and he out of space. On radio, on the news talk.